Hi guys, this is Jason and I'm here with the unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Unlike the hands-on, now we know much more about the device. We can reveal its SAR value and we've also done some tests. So we have here the most powerful handset of the newcomers. The color version is titanium grey, there's quite a few of them, even orange and yellow. People have been very polarized about the yellow version, I actually like it. So, this year we get a flatter screen and frame Galaxy AI and some brand new tech, plus the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor on this one, the Exynos on the other smaller models, at least in Europe. $1299 is the price tag of the handset and I'm using the pin to unlock it for now, but you can also use a fingerprint scanner or the face unlock. It's an unboxing, so let's get straight to it, let's see what's inside the box. Nothing in this area here. Well, here we find the following. A charger hasn't been present in these packages from Samsung for years now. So let's see what we've got. Okay, so first things first, this is the key used to access the slots, nano SIM. The phone also supports eSIM. This is a cable from USB-C to USB-C used to connect to the charger. And guess what? We have this uh, small leaflet here that shows the SAR value as 1.056 watts per kilogram for the head, 1.30 watts per kilogram for the body. So this is basically the level of radiation you're receiving when using the phone. Uh, it's important nowadays because Apple has had some iPhones banned, yep, banned in uh, France, if I remember correctly, for not having the proper SAR value. Uh, I'm referring to the iPhone 12. Usually SAR value should be below two. And if I remember correctly, our recently unboxed uh, OnePlus 12 has higher values than the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Going back to the device, we have Gorilla Glass armor protection at the front side with extra glare protection. Gorilla Glass at the back side, glass as well, and the frame is this time titanium and not aluminum. It's supposed to be more resilient to scratches and drops. The phone is IP68 certified. It can be sunk in water for uh, uh, up to 30 minutes, so 1.5 meters in depth. It's still a 6.1 inch device, like the predecessor. However, this time around, it's slimmer and lighter. Let's actually decrease the brightness because, well, it's a very bright panel we have here. Now, if you want measurements, we've got them. So, this phone measures 8.6 millimeters in thickness. The S22 Ultra was 8.9. It weighs 232 grams. The predecessor was 234 grams. Now, it's flatter. Flat. Uh, screen, flat top side, flat bottom, flat back side, a gentle curve of the sides, only very gentle. Okay, so enough about design, I find it to be pretty comfy, pretty well built, but still rather massive. The colors are varied, titanium black, titanium grey, titanium violet, titanium yellow, titanium blue and green, plus orange. The protruding camera doesn't protrude that much, so yeah, also doesn't have a dedicated module. Now, other things worth mentioning, the screen I'm playing with right here. Well, this one is a 6.8 inch AMOLED panel, much like the predecessor had. I'm talking about dynamic AMOLED uh, LTPO, uh, which is able to drop down to 1 Hz or up to 120 Hz, HDR10 plus support. Resolution is Quad HD basically, 3120 over 1440 pixel, 2600 nits of brightness and always on display. The processor inside is one of the better ones. I'm talking about the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, an octa-core CPU with a GPU capable of ray tracing. Interestingly enough, it should be a 4 Galaxy version with a higher clock rate, and it is. The main core is clocked at 3.39 GHz. Uh, the OnePlus 12 one is 3.3 GHz. However, the lower cores of the OnePlus 12 Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 are clocked higher and split differently from here. Okay, so aside from that we have 12 gigs of RAM, LPDDR5X and uh, 256GB of storage. There are versions of the phone with 512 or even 1TB, there's no microSD and the initial offer for the phone involves getting more storage for the same price. The battery is a 5000mAh unit with the same data as the predecessor, 45W wire charging, 15W wireless charging and even reverse wireless charging, 4.5W. You're going to put your watch or another phone here or a pair of headphones and charge them wirelessly. Stereo speakers are here. We got the earpiece at the top side, well hidden. We got the bottom speaker here. We have the S Pen tray on the left side. 
and we also have the USB-C connector here just in case you're wondering plus the SIM tray just a quick look around the device well other specs uh, on the connectivity front USB-C 3.2 just so you know 5G Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7 even there's also Bluetooth 5.3 GPS GLONASS Galileo BDS uh, take care of connectivity plus QZSS NFC and ultra wideband are available as well for your sensor needs we also have compass and a barometer on board now the camera the cutout for the front camera is a 12 megapixel shooter which is a trend that started last year dual pixel face detection autofocus hdr 10 plus capture and 4k 60 frames per second the back side should only host one change the periscope camera uh, but let's take things one at a time so still 200 megapixel main camera f1.7 aperture laser autofocus optical emit stabilization and something called the multi-directional phase detection autofocus the periscope camera now the S23 Ultra had a 10 megapixel camera able to do 10x optical zoom. Now we have a 50 megapixel camera periscope able to do 5x optical zoom. Now uh, by switching to a lower resolution of 12 megapixels, it combines pixels in one and delivers the same results as a 10 megapixel 10x optical zoom camera. Then we have the uh, other telephoto 10 megapixel camera with 3x optical zoom and finally the ultra wide 10 megapixel camera which serves for super steady video capture and also has 120 degree uh, photo capture this is the led flash and uh, we're given 8k 30 frames per second video capture as a maximum resolution here you can see some of the camera options quite a few of them you should know most of them there's expert raw which has been uh, outs outsourced let's say or i don't know expanded as a separated app Pro and Pro Video, Night, Food, Panorama, Slow-Mo, Hyperlapse, Portrait Video, Dual Recording, Single Take. Videos can be shot as I said before up to 8K and 30. This is the photo section. This is the Super Steady by the way, only available in Quad HD. Um, photo and Portrait with its cool studio options, which you probably know already. Now in the photo section and the video section there are some extras here, uh, you have intelligent optimization which is basically AI, scene optimizer turned off by default, it tends to exaggerate with processing at times and the video stabilization is baked in, you also have high bitrate videos, HDR10+, zoomed in microphone, 360 audio. Now these are the camera features uh, and let's see what else we have here. Okay, so I guess it's time to talk about the uh, software. It's Android 14, which we have here with uh, One UI 6.1 on top. And guess what? Seven years of Android updates, which is quite amazing. There's also Dex Wireless for your productivity needs. You can start it from here and you have a desktop experience. You connect to a monitor or TV set, mouse and keyboard, and you should be good to go in order to get a desktop experience. There's ray tracing and a huge vapor chamber now. Uh, and also as usual newsfeed here. We got the edge bar here with your split screen multitasking needs. There are some changes here in the quick settings, better separation, an enlarged brightness area, a better looking album when playing music. You know those from the review we did for the S23 FE. That's where we covered One UI 6. 6.1 doesn't bring extra innovations aside from the ones we know. Uh, it's focused more on AI. We have modes and routines still, wallpaper and style, themes, lock screen and so forth. Now, of course, there's also the stylus, which can be used to draw, write, take notes, and also do a variety of actions. You can do smart select, you can do screen write, you can create a brand new note, you can scribble like this. There's nothing exactly new here from what we already knew. That's why the AI remains the core focus of the experience. So, what is the AI able to do? Uh, one of the most interesting features is definitely circle to search. So, if I'm in the app store and I see a game I like, I just keep this pressed and I can circle the icon here. I can also do that with a pen and you can already tell that uh, this seems like a Valorant character for some reason or a character from a video game. I can do something else. Um, basically anything I can see on the screen, I can circle and anything I want. Uh, you can access our sister site, for example, and look up something. Let me just get rid of this. Okay, so uh, yes, access the sister site. We're seeing this phone here, we're curious about it. And... Oh, it recognized a case of sorts. Okay, let's try this one maybe. I'm really curious about this one. 
Oh, it actually recognized the Zenfone 10 and even found our article. That's just one example of the visual search of circle to search, a combination of Google and Samsung technologies. And as I said, you can also do that with your photos. Imagine you're scroll scrolling on Instagram and you just saw an interesting thing like this juice here. Keep it pressed, circle to search. You can do that with a stylus and we immediately found it. This also works wonders to expand your search. For example, uh, thing like things where you can buy, where you can buy it, ingredients for food or a route if, if you're in a new town. Just some examples. Let's maybe try the soup. I'm curious about that. Okay, it found the soup brand. And as I said before, you can also expand the search from here. That's circle to search, one of the aspects. Another one of the aspects is, uh, well, the ability to correct your photos. So you can remove uh, shadows from your face. You can improve pictures, improve lighting, move subjects. So let's take, for example, uh, one of these photos here. If I'm not happy with this picture here, I can also press Y and it will give me some options like background effect or a remaster. This is the AI advising me to do some changes for my pics. This is the before, this is the after. The face has been lit up a bit and so has the background. We can also move subjects if you want to. So if there was a person here, I would be able to move it. I'm also guessing it works for pets. So let's try it with this statue here. Okay, so uh, pressing this. Okay, it suggests a remaster going in here. Doing this edit, you can also straighten and press the AI, reimagine the images. Okay. Tap or draw around anything you want to move or delete. Okay, so it identified the subject even though I didn't highlight it as well. And now I should be able to move the statue if I want to here on this side. And generative AI should do that. And it also completes the missing pieces where the statue was. You can do that with people as well. You can do that with objects. My guess is that this is happening in the cloud. This is quite an amazing feat because you actually cannot tell that there was something here on this statue podium. This is the original and this is the after photo. It did move a pillar with it and we're done. So this is where the statue was. Decent level of edit. So yeah, that's one example of generative AI. Other examples is translation of phone calls in 13 languages, including Polish. And you can also do something cool. Um, you can also have auto translation for your recording. If you're a journalist or you're in a meeting, um, you can have the voice here and you can have the transcript and you will have a summary of what the people spoke. This is the voice I recorded. I actually pretended to be two people and these are the speakers. Then there's the other thing. You can trigger the uh, notes application and uh, start writing something. Even a basic thing like, uh, how are you friend? And you can have writing style suggestions. Original, professional, casual, social, polite, and emojify, depending on what you need. You can suggest that. You can also have summarize, so you can have a summary of a huge uh, piece of work, note, or dramatic opera or literature, summed up as bullet points, which is useful for your uh, needs. There is also chat assist, which translates your talks uh, when using Messenger, WhatsApp and basic messaging application. And that's just part of what you can do here with these features powered by AI. We also have Android Auto available here and in Android Auto, the AI will be able to summarize your messages, read them to you and suggest answers while you're on the go. So yeah, you can also find advanced intelligence features here phone, Samsung keyboard, interpreter, live translation of spoken conversation as uh, text or input, format, summarize, correct, translate or generate cover for the notes and the simple summary of web page text plus translations like we saw on the Google Pixel 8 Pro. So these are the features that the AI provides. This one here is also quite useful. Uh, you have tap to talk, you have permissions, microphone, nearby devices. So yeah. You also can download language packs to do a translation if you're in a new country. That's the phone in a nutshell. I haven't insisted too much on the S Pen. I feel kind of guilty about it. That used to be the core of the Galaxy Note experience, now the Galaxy S, but now the AI seems to be the core. We'll be back with a full review very soon. The AI seems to be the main feature here, even though uh, the main camera has nothing to laugh at. So I'm going to give you a bit of a spoiler. Let's actually discard this. 
okay and I'm going to show you something extra as well. This is the result you achieve in Antutu 10, 1,902,000 points, which is quite impressive. And we also have a bunch of pictures taken with the uh, main camera. These are food photos and this year they're coming up better than the past years. The colors are not overblown as they were, even with the food mode, finally Samsung decided to listen to some people. Okay, the selfies look great as they usually do and the colors are spot on. A bit warmer than on the iPhone, but that's a usual occurrence on Samsung devices. And focus seems to have been fixed. I was unhappy with the focus ever since Samsung put a 108 megapixel camera on a Galaxy S. This time, close-up focus is handled better. It's just a preview of the review you're about to receive at some point. An excellent level of zoom, by the way. Okay, that's it from me. This has been a presentation and unboxing of the Galaxy S24 Ultra Galaxy AI-powered phone. Goodbye.